Today, I feel compelled to discuss with you a matter of great importance. Some weeks ago, I released a statement regarding a course correction for the name of the Church. I did this because the Lord impressed upon my mind the importance of the name He decreed for His Church, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Let me explain why we care so deeply about this issue. But first, let me state what this effort is not. It is not a name change. It is not rebranding. It is not cosmetic. It is not a whim. And it is not inconsequential. Instead, it is a correction. It is the command of the Lord. Joseph Smith did not name the Church restored through him, neither did Mormon. It was the Savior himself who said, For thus shall my Church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thus, the name of the Church is not negotiable. When the Savior clearly states what the name of his Church should be, and even precedes his declaration with, Thus shall my church be called, he's serious. And if we allow nicknames to be used or adopt or even sponsor those nicknames ourselves, he is offended. What's in a name, or in this case, a nickname? When it comes to nicknames of the Church, such as LDS Church, the Mormon Church, or the Church of the Latter-day Saints, the most glaring omission is the absence of the Savior's name. To remove the Lord's name from the Lord's Church is a major victory for Satan. When we discard the Savior's name, we are subtly disregarding all that Jesus Christ did for us, even His Atonement. After all He had endured, and after all He had done for humankind, I realize with profound regret that we have unwittingly acquiesced in the Lord's restored Church being called by other names, each of which expunges the sacred name of Jesus Christ. When we omit his name from his church, we are inadvertently removing him as the central focus of our lives. Taking the Savior's name upon us includes declaring and witnessing to others through our actions and our words that Jesus is the Christ. Have we been so afraid to offend someone who called us Mormons that we have failed to defend the Savior himself, to stand up for him even in the name by which his church is called? If we as a people and as individuals are to have access to the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ to cleanse and heal us, to strengthen and magnify us, and ultimately to exalt us, we must clearly acknowledge Him as the source of that power. We can begin by calling His Church by the name He decreed. My dear brothers and sisters, I promise that if we will do our best to restore the correct name of the Lord's Church, he whose church this is will pour down his power and blessings upon the heads of the Latter-day Saints, the likes of which we have never seen. We will have the knowledge and power of God to help us take the blessings of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ to every 
nation, kindred, tongue, and people, and to prepare the world for the second coming of the Lord. So, what's in a name? When it comes to the name of the Lord's Church, the answer is everything. Jesus Christ directed us to call the church by his name because it is his church filled with his power. I have felt the, the clear impression to follow up today on two of my previous general conference messages. In October 2011 conference, I urged that we remember these important words of the Lord. For thus saith, thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With these words, the Lord makes clear that this is not only a formal title, but the name by which His church is to be called. Giving His clear declaration, we should not refer to the church by any other name, such as the Mormon Church or the LDS Church. If members learn to use the correct name of the church in connection with the word Mormon, it will underscore that we are Christians, members of the Savior's Church. Brothers and sisters, let us follow up and develop the habit of always making it clear that we belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Foremost and underpinning all that we do, anchored throughout the Revelation, is the Lord's name which is the authority by which we act in the church. Every prayer offered, even by little children, ends in the name of Jesus Christ. Every blessing, every ordinance, every ordination, every official act is done in the name of Jesus Christ. It is His church and His name for Him the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I bear my testimony that the Savior lives. I know the Lord. I am His witness. I know of His great sacrifice and eternal love for all of Heavenly Father's children. The Lord Jesus Christ knew how important it was to clearly name His Church in these latter days. In the 115th section of the Doctrine and Covenants, he himself named the church. For thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As you'll remember, President Boyd K. Packer discussed the importance of the name of the church in last April's General Conference. He explained that, obedient to Revelation, we call ourselves the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rather than the Mormon Church. Because the full name of the Church is so important, I echo the revelations from the scriptures, the First Presidency's instructions in letters of 1982 and 2001, and the words of other apostles who have encouraged the members of the Church to uphold and teach the world that the Church is known by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the name by which the Lord will call us at the last day. It is the name by which His Church will be distinguished from all others. Let us develop the habit within our families and our church activities and our daily interactions of making it clear that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the name by which the Lord Himself has directed that we be known. As the First Presidency asked in their letter of February 23, 2001, the use of the revealed name of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is increasingly important in our responsibility to proclaim the name of the Savior throughout the world. Accordingly, we ask that when we refer to the Church, we use its full name wherever possible." Close quote. 
obedient to the revelation, we call ourselves the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rather than the Mormon Church. It's one thing for others to refer to the church as the Mormon Church or to us as Mormons. It is quite another for us to do so. The First Presidency stated, the use of the revealed name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is increasingly important in our responsibility to proclaim the name of the Savior throughout the world. Accordingly, we ask that when we refer to the church, we use the full name whenever possible. The world will refer to us as they will, but in our speech, all remember that we belong to the Church of Jesus Christ. In his April 1995 General Conference Address, Elder Russell M. Nelson noted in footnote 37, Speaking of correct names, we are reminded of a proclamation given by the Lord. Thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He did not say, Thus shall my church be named. He said, Thus shall my church be called. Members have been cautioned by the brethren who wrote, we feel that some may be misled by the too frequent use of the term Mormon Church. Many of our people are disturbed by the practice of the media and of many others to disregard totally the true name of the Church and to use the nickname the Mormon Church. Six months ago in our conference, Elder Russell M. Nelson delivered an excellent address on the correct name of the Church. He quoted the words of the Lord Himself, Thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He then went on to discuss the various elements of that name. I commend to you a rereading of his talk. Today I would like to speak about a name. We're all pleased when our names are pronounced and spelled correctly. Sometimes a nickname is used instead of the real name, but a nickname may offend either the one named or the parents who gave the name. The name of which I shall speak is not a personal name, yet the same principles apply. I refer to a name given by the Lord. Thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Note carefully the language of the Lord. He did not say, Thus shall my church be named. He said, Thus shall my church be called. Years ago, its members were cautioned by the brethren who wrote, We feel that some may be misled by the too frequent use of the term Mormon Church. Before any other name is considered to be a legitimate substitute, the thoughtful person might reverently consider the feelings of the heavenly parent who bestowed that name. By divine directive, the title of the Church bears the sacred name of Jesus Christ, whose Church this is. He so decreed more than once. Nearly two thousand years ago, the Lord said, ye shall call the Church in my name. This Church, established under the direction of Almighty God, fulfills promises made in biblical times. It is part of the restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. It has been restored and given a name by the Lord Himself, he issued this solemn warning, Let all men beware how they take my name in their lips. Remember, he added, that which cometh from above is sacred and must be spoken with care. Therefore, just as we revere his holy name, we likewise revere the name that he decreed for his Church. As members of his Church, we are privileged to participate in its divine destiny. May we so honor him who declared, Thus shall my Church be called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.
In the April 1961 General Conference, President Marion G. Romney said, How about the name of this church? What is it? It is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. How did it get the name? Did Joseph Smith select it? No. The Lord Jesus Christ himself told Joseph Smith to name this church the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I bear you my testimony that this statement is true, and this witness which I bear will be binding upon you, for I, like my brethren of the presiding councils of the church, am a called and ordained personal witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. This church is the church of God. We do have the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we will live it, we will gain the promised blessings. In the October 1948 General Conference, George Albert Smith said, This is our Father's church. He gave it its name. I am sure we will show our appreciation of that great and wonderful name by respecting it and not be found calling ourselves Mormons as the world nicknames us. The name Mormon to many people in the world means anything but the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, they do not know what it means. I congratulate you as members of the church that you belong to the church of Jesus Christ. Live in the age of when his church has been organized and has been given his name. If we are faithful and devoted to the end of our lives, when we go to the other side, we will find we shall not belong to some other church, such as the church of St. John or St. Peter or St. Paul or Mormon, or that of any of the apostles or great men who have lived upon the earth. But we will find that we belong to the church of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us remember that, and let us respect it, brethren and sisters, and not be careless about it. In the April 1948 General Conference, George Albert Smith said, It is his church. He gave it its name, and he advised us that we should be so called. Don't let the Lord down by calling this the Mormon Church. He didn't call it the Mormon Church. I sometimes feel disappointed that so many of us seem to be timid, if I may use that term, and give this church that the Lord has permitted us to be identified with rather a casual reference. I am so proud of membership in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints when I think that all the blessings of the world may be mine as a member of this church, and if I were not a member, how many blessings there may be lost for me. In the October 1945 General Conference, George Albert Smith said, I would like to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that we honor the name of the church. It is not the church of James and John, it is not the church of Moroni, nor it is the Church of Mormon. It is the Church of Jesus Christ. And while all these men were wonderful and notable characters, we have been directed to worship God in a church that bears the name of His beloved Son. I wish that our young people, as they grow up, would keep that fact in mind. We have become so accustomed to being called the Mormon Church by all our friends and neighbors throughout the world that many people do not know the proper name of the church, and I think the Lord would expect us to let them know that.